Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and uh, these are two PV Radio 1000 snare drums. I've already shown you this one, but this one is brand new. I just picked it up from Badge's Drum Shop in Ohio. Thank you, Charlie. I've been looking for one of these for several years. It matches this kit. So this is the original drum, very rare size, a 13 inch drum which you hardly ever saw these so I've, and I've been looking for one of these because when I play with this drum because the way the shell comes out I have to kind of you know spread my legs out pretty far so this fits right in there now this is basically in you know close to mint condition it's just a beautiful drum you see how they blocked it together and that was uh, part of the snare drum line they did this for the Radio 1000 snares. They use basically stav construction on these. Very thick, unlike these shells, which are very thin. And I've done a whole video, a uh, couple, on these drums, and I'll link it in the description. Great sounding drums, great rock drums. A uh, little strange looking. I know they look like giant toilet flanges or uh, <laughs> plumbing things, or maybe cable wheels, but uh, they really sound great. So it's to me, it's worth the effort because I'm not necessarily looking for looks, although I don't mind the way they look, but I'm looking for sound, and they sound great and feel great. Now, one of the quirks about of these drums is they have two strainers. I don't think that's a great design. would have been better using kind of the DW adjustable butt plate. Originally, it was three positions. Now it's five. Those are great. This is just a little bit confusing. Uh, so normally what I do is I just... Uh, have one some tension on the right side and the left side where my, I usually put my strainer I'll have that control the whole drum now this has the original heads you see there and not a very good head for a snare drum so today I'm going to take this head off and I'm going to put a Remo coated ambassador on there because it, it'll just sound a lot better. I could play brushes with it and then what I'll do is I'll play it on the kit for you. I'm going to take a little closer look at this drum right now. I believe these heads were made for them by Aquarian uh, and this would have been way way back in the 1990s so right when Aquarian was getting their footing in the drum head business so probably had some sort of deal with them and we'll give you a roundabout tour here of the drum. This is the gloss finish. They also made the matte finish, which are my drums, my drum set, or the matte finish. And I'll show you the badge. Now, this is the stick-on badge. So on these snares, they have the stick-on badges. On the drum set, the RSB1s, uh, those, those uh, were actually um, screwed on. You know, they had a nut and a bolt. And then the later Radio 1000s, the drum sets, uh, they had the stick-on badges like these. So these are the Radio Pros, and I'll show you this one. And I'll show you this badge on the drum set, and you'll see how it's screwed on. Not sure why they did that, since everything else on the shell is floating. But So these are truly um, uh, RSB1s. Not really Radio 1000s. These were before the Radio 1000s. And the plywood rims there. And the uh, Radio 1000s had the uh, blocked bridge. So these were some of the first ones they ever produced. Great sounding drums. All right. So I'll take this head off and then I'll show you the, the inside of the snare. So I took the head off and I'll show you this shell, just beautifully made. And uh, I told you in the other video that I did with this black one that the uh, bearing edges reminded me of the Zelkova edges. Not as sharp, but they're 45 and they're really well done. So whoever made these shells for them was doing an excellent job, very high quality. And you see the different maple, so you get some coloration uh, changes between the staves, which is nice. So it's not very uniform there. But 
and it's, this is held together really nicely for a long time. Now there's a number in there. Let me take a look. It's just a serial number. It says 106033. So maybe one of you out there knows what that means. Maybe you could date the drum. And as always, you see the design here. So really well done. And again, this drum is probably from the early 90s, I would think is my guess. So it's held up really well for these 30 some odd years. So what I'm going to do is throw in or on a Remo Ambassador coated head and you'll hear the difference right away. So I changed the head and already it sounds better to me. It's a little more opened up. It's a very tight sounding drum, which is what you expect from a 13. So. And one thing about these thick shell snare drums, like the old sonars, uh, they don't have a lot of ring. But if we take this muffling off, this one does have qu has quite a bit of ring. Reminds me a little of the, the drum uh, Steve Jordan used on some of those old David Sanborn records. Uh, you know, that really ringy, great, you know, sound. So we'll see what that sounds like when we take it over to the drum set. But uh, yeah, changing that original head out really helps. Now, normally I use diplomats on these snare drums. I don't have a 13-inch dipl diplomat right now. There's a diplomat on this 14-inch drum. I like the thinner uh, heads on these thicker shell snare drums. And by the way, if you're wondering, I have the drum tuned to around a B. That's what I'm hearing. Um, I haven't, you know, checked it with the piano, but it's around a B, maybe a B flat. But I will probably muffle it maybe a little less than this, but it's going to need some muffling. So let's take it over to the drum set and give it a listen. So here we are at the drum set. I did change out that leather muffler for this little piece of moon gel. I think it gives it just the right amount of ring.
it's extremely punchy. Uh, I like it quite a bit, a lot more than um, some of my other smaller snare drums. Once again, it's a small drum, so it's not going to get that depth, but it's very dry. Now let's take the muffling off. For that kind of really fast, intricate, rolly kind of stuff, it's just great. And even simple backbeat stuff. So it's a really great drum, but not an all-around drum. So let's put this other PV drum up here, and I'm going to have to change the basket width. Now these drums are heavy, just so you know. Oh my god. Very heavy. I haven't weighed them, but I would think it'd be at least 20 pounds. And one thing, uh, if you're using one of these pearl stands that I use, uh, the orchestra stands, they work a lot better than this Mapex stand because the rubber grommets or the rubber pieces on the basket are thicker. I'm going to raise this thing up here. Just a hair. So you'll find this drum is going to be a lot more snary. So right away, a lot thicker, a lot fatter. a different breed of drum altogether. So both of them together were great. Uh, now I got to find a matching 14 inch for this kit. That's in good shape. A lot of these drums are just beat to hell when you find them because they're so old. And people, you know, abused them. They don't travel well. I talked about that in my original uh, PV drum set uh, video if you want to go back and look at that. I play them a lot. There, uh, These are like a always say wonderful sounding drums even if you don't like the way they look they sound incredible so i'll play a little and uh we'll call it a day